The first program I'm going to do is convert base 10 to base 2. If you have the pseudocode, you should have one that says convert a base 10 number to a base 2 number. I'm going to follow that pseudocode and discuss what I'm doing as I go through it. You're welcome to watch or follow along, whichever you'd like to do. Again, you're welcome to stay as long as you like to stay. You don't have to stay the whole hour. You don't have to participate. You can watch. You can type in things. And this, we'll see how this goes and see if we can make it a useful adjunct to what we're teaching in the class. New project. Java project. I'm calling the project convert to base 2, which is a reasonable descriptive name for this project. We don't like to use non-descriptive project names. You'll notice that it didn't even give me a default project name, which is a good thing. Once I have a project, the next thing I need is a package. What we've been doing in class is just using the name of the project with the word package appended to the end. We'll probably change that as we go along, but it's a good enough now. It's a good enough descriptive name for us. And then once I've got the package, inside the package I need a class. And I'm going to append the word class to the name of my project. So I have convert to base to class. And I need a main. You always want to make sure that that public static void main is checked because that's where we're going to put our code. And you should end up with something like this. I am going to close this window on the right, or the left rather, to give me more space on the screen. And I'm going to delete this comment. Now I've got a class created, a project created, a package created, and I can start following the pseudocode. The first line of pseudocode that I need to implement at this point says declare input as integer. That's a declaration statement. Int input. The second line of pseudocode declare found a divisor as a boolean. The second line here. So I'm going to say boolean found a divisor. next line of pseudocode says prompt the user to enter an integer. When it says prompt, the implication is we're going to put something onto the screen, display it in the console, system.out.println. Enter an integer. The next line says read from the keyboard in, into input. When we see read from the keyboard, we know that we need a scanner object. When I type in the declaration and instantiation of the scanner object, I get squiggles because the scanner class has not been defined in this program. It's easy enough to fix it by hovering and then selecting import. And I do that because it's just less typing for me than to type in the import statement. I just let Eclipse fix it for me. That makes that squiggle go away. Next line says read from the keyboard. So I'm still working on the same line of code. So I'm going to say input equals in dot next int. 
that reads from the keyboard. Next line says declare divisor as integer. One thing that we're working on as we develop these programs is declaring the variables as close to the first use as possible. That's a design consideration that most people follow. Therefore our variable declarations are scattered throughout the code and we usually put it right above the first place we reference it. The next line says initialize divisor to 2 to the 30th which is 1 billion 73,704 you can read that and then drop into a loop. Loop while divisor is greater than zero. That looks like a while loop to me. I could make it a for loop as we've said. I could make it either one of those kinds of loops. But since the word while is in the pseudocode, I'm sorry. Yeah, loop while divisor is greater than zero. Type the opening curly brace, press enter, Eclipse provides the closing curly brace. It's just a nice uh, feature of the IDE. The next line of pseudocode says if input is greater than or equal to divisor. So if input is greater than or equal to divisor. As soon as we type in an if, we open a curly brace. Just a strategy for writing good solid code. Anywhere we open an if, anywhere we open a while, we put in a set of braces. And the next line says print a 1. This is part of our conversion from decimal to binary. System dot out dot print line We found a 1. The next line of pseudocode is an end if. The end if matches the closing curly brace that we put into our code. I don't need to do anything there. Actually, it's an else, my mistake. I was reading the wrong part of the pseudocode, so I need an else. I type else, opening curly brace and it provides the closing curly brace for the else. And then I refer back to the pseudocode again. Please forgive me, I've gotten totally off track now. I left out two statements in the if, my mistake. So I've got to go back and put these two statements in. My apologies. So found a divisor equals true. Initializing the Boolean to true and then input equals input minus divisor. Okay, that gets me back up to speed matching the pseudocode. At this point then I have everything from here up in my code. I went back up here and in the declaration statement I initialized that to false. Thank you. Now I'm down inside the else and the next thing to do is implement this if. If found a divisor equal equal true inside the else if found a divisor equal equal true 
open up a set of curly braces because every time we create an, an if condition, a logical if, we need a set of braces. And in there it says print zero system dot out dot print line quote zero close quote semicolon and that puts me at the bottom of this set of ifs and end ifs right there the next thing to do inside the while loop but beneath the if else is to reduce divisor by a factor of two and again don't beat yourself up if you're not following the algorithm the intention here is to demonstrate a little bit of code development, not necessarily teach you an algorithm. You may have to look at this more than once to actually figure out what's going on if you're not familiar with binary numbers. The next line of pseudocode says end loop. I am at the end of the loop. There's the closing bracket for the loop. If you take a close look at Eclipse, you'll notice that when you put your cursor on the line with the closing bracket, it automatically highlights the opening bracket. Here's the opening bracket up here. Here's the closing bracket down here. Our goal is always to indent when we open a brace and outdent when we close a brace. If we end up in the very first column at the end of the class, we indented and outdented correctly. And when I write my code, my closing brace is in the same column as the line that starts the, the block. This closing brace is right underneath the W and while, and I can visually see that those two go together. Getting back to the pseudocode again, the last thing to do is print a new line that goes outside the loop. That would go right there. I'm going to print an empty string. That will cause Java just to move the cursor down to the next line. Looking at this then, I don't have any squiggles. That's a good sign. I'll make that a little bigger for you. I also don't have any comments at all. Not good coding practice. We'd like to see something at the top. Nuts. <laughs> uh, certainly take credit for it. It also has not been saved yet. You'll notice the little star next to the C in the tab title. That little star there means it has not been saved since the last time you made a change. I actually haven't made any saves at all. The whole thing is still stored in memory. I'm going to click on the Save button, and now my work is saved to the hard drive. I haven't tested it yet. This is a relatively short program. It fits on one screen. I don't have a lot of problems with waiting until you've typed it in to test it. If it was five or ten pages of code, I would suggest incremental testing, not waiting until the entire program is written. But if it's this small and you have pseudocode, you're probably okay. I will click the Run button, and I get the prompt, Enter an Integer. 42. I get 10, 10, 10. Is that right? Let's assume we have no idea. First of all, it's pretty ugly because a binary number should be a string of ones and zeros on the same line, not 
each on individual lines. So I'd like to clean up my code a little bit. If you look at the pseudocode again, it says print 1 and it says print 0. It doesn't say whether to print it on a separate line or the same line. Okay, there's some flexibility there. Then at the bottom it says print a new line, which we did. We would like to make this a little nicer, a little, a little more visually interesting, so I'm going to change these prints from print line just to print. And that doesn't print a new line, it puts everything on the same line. And this will be a little more visually pleasing. So when I run this, I type in 42. I get one zero one zero one zero. Let's assume for the moment we don't know if that's right. We have no idea. We can verify our work any number of ways. In this particular case, we know that the Windows calculator has a binary mode. I can put in 42, and then I can change it to programmer. It didn't convert for me. How about if I put in 42, then I click on binary, and Windows Calculator says a 42 is 101010. That's what I got. I'm reasonably sure that works. I'm still not happy because that is a decent first test, but it does not test boundary conditions at all. What I should do is run it again, and let's test some boundary conditions. What's the smallest positive integer, non-negative integer? Zero. So I should test against zero. I get nothing. That's probably not good. What's the biggest integer I should be able to test? Well, how about if I just grab this value out of the program, 2 to the 30th, 2 to the 30th is that, 1, 1 billion something. I run the program. I paste in that number, and I get that. Is that right? I don't know. I can't count those zeros. I'll take this, copy it, paste it into the calculator again, and then convert it to decimal and I get the same number. I have some confidence now that it works for a very large number and it works for 42. I wasn't happy with what I got when I put in a zero. What I can do is I'm just, let's just cheat right now. Let's just cheat. If divisor equal equal zero system dot out dot print zero and if you look at this loop I will never enter this loop if the divisor is zero it doesn't even do the loop at all it goes through this code it prints out a zero it doesn't do this code at all. So I fixed this special case that seems to break my program. If I put in a zero now, it gives me a zero, okay? Oops, that's the wrong value, sorry. Not, div not divisor, input, that was silly. That's what I wanted. So I put in zero, it gives me a zero, and I took care of that special case. To review my testing then, I tested a very large number, and I tested a very small number, and I tested a number in the middle. So I have some confidence that I got a program that probably works.